Hello, everybody. Nice to see you. <clears throat> Real quick shout out to my dear friend, uh, Tong Vu, who's uh, actually a chemist who originated this series, The Chemist. Tom and I worked for many years together, good friends. So uh, he invited me to join him here. And uh, of course, uh, uh, very welcome. Happy to have Jim McConnell here. Welcome him. Uh, Jim McConnell is a well-known chemist in our industry uh, and the brains behind his own company. Uh, not the only brains. He's married to a very intelligent woman. She would kill me if I, she heard me say that. But he's the chemical brains uh, behind uh, his company. So uh, well, well, uh, uh, well versed in the ways of chemistry for the nail industry, really understand the nail industry. Uh, I'll let Jim tell him a little bit about himself there, uh, but he's a good friend and I'm very happy to have him on the show with us today. A great source of information, which is why we wanted to have him here today. And also too, I, I wanna say a word about our format. Uh, talking to Tom Vu and Kelvin, we said, you know, we can sit here and we can present or lecture you know for an hour or you know we can do we can we can do what nail technicians really want us to do and that is answer their questions i've never met a nail technician didn't have a question uh, and they can't find them all and that's one of the greatest frustrations i think of being a nail professional is you can't find valid or at least reasonable answers to your questions uh, oftentimes or often enough i should say not always of course there's there's great educators out there too who are giving great information out but we want to be a good source of information as well uh, so that's what we hope to do on the show is to answer questions and uh, address the current issues which is why we invite kimberly as our, our first uh technician to come on and talk with us today she's not wow. here just ask us questions but of course to discuss with us uh the issues so that we can uh get to them deeper and uh, hopefully uh, this the format is going to be great and you're gonna love it so with that let me turn it over to uh, mr jim mcconnell let him say a little bit about himself been a chemist for a while started a company about 21 years ago and been in the beauty industry and love it um, one of the great things is uh what i've realized is that we have some really great minds in the industry doug shoon obviously one of them uh certainly the 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 corner post, uh, the keystone of our industry and all things science related. And it's been an honor to be Doug's friend and to be on this show. Uh, I got a degree in chemistry, uh, a couple of minors in, in other science endeavors. And it's just been, it's been great. Uh, we love being part of this industry. Well, thank you, Jim. Appreciate your kind words. And um, I think we're actually lucky to have you in our industry, having chemists that are knowledgeable and involved. There's a lot of chemists who are very knowledgeable. Uh, there's not a lot of chemists, I should say, in the nail industry, but the chemists who are in the industry can be very knowledgeable, but for one reason or another, they're not really involved in sharing information. Uh, so it's nice to have Jim around who can uh, who can share his opinions on things as well. And a lot of what we'll say today are gonna, are gonna be our opinions, and some of it's going to be facts, and hopefully we'll all be careful to make sure we distinguish between the two, if something's a fact or opinion, I'll try and make sure you understand that I'm just sharing my opinion on something. But we do want to make our show fact-based. Uh, we want it to have something not just, hey, I got a, I had a dream last night, and in my dream, uh, you know, that's not, not the kind of stuff we want to talk about. We want to talk about things that really are based on some kind of a factual uh, study or scientific report or uh, that or maybe even government regulations are often what drives us and makes us just do what we have to do uh, to follow just to follow the regulations or uh, good manufacturing practices, whatever they are. So happy to discuss all those things. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kimberly and to let her start the discussions. And uh, maybe, maybe Kimberly, you should tell us a little bit about yourself before we actually dive into the questions. Hey, everybody. Thanks for um Having me, Kelvin is my bro, like you said. I've known Jen for many, many years. Doug, I've met you as well, and I really look up to everything that you guys do, and the science part is very interesting to me. I'm probably the anomaly of nail techs, that I'm like the science nerdy girl. So um, I do love that, and I always have questions. I am a 31-year veteran nail tech. I've been licensed wow. since 1989. And um, I've been licensed in four states, and I, cur I currently hold both Oregon and Washington. I've always kept them up. Um, I, I belong to a couple of groups that I moderate in Oregon, Washington, and a couple of groups that I kind of helped get together. And we have nail play dates, and all of us are 
uh, very concerned about the industry and making sure that we are not each other's competition. We are here to build each other up. So I've mentored a lot of students and I've recently become an educator. Well, I mean, this year is going into year five, which is still new as an educator. And, uh, you know, after 31 years, I literally have learned more in the last 10 years than I did the first 20. So there's a lot to be said about the industry and how it's changed. So, so I'm really happy you're here because we all have these inquiring minds. This one has been on my mind for many months. Um, I reached out to you earlier in the year at the beginning of COVID. Um, I spoke with Holly about this as well. And this fogging issue, fogging company, fogging method. Um, there's companies all throughout the US that are doing this in salons. And I personally have a couple of friends, colleagues that have have their salon fogged, if you will. And I tried to reach out to the company. I was actually interested in it because at the time I was, um, taking care of my uncle and my mother is elderly and i thought if this is some added protection that i could do to keep myself safe as well as my clients my family members then i would be interested in it and so um i couldn't find any information on it they don't have an epa registered solution they come in in these vans with like uh air compressor in the back with gallons of solution and they take this tubing put it inside the facility and proceed to mist something in the salon so i had asked you about that quite a while back if you remember i do remember that conversation since you directed that directly at me i'll, I'll i guess i'll start with uh, uh my responses here Okay. Um, first thing I point out to everyone is that disinfectants are serious things. They're toxic substance designed to destroy living things. So we need to work with them carefully and properly. They can be used safely. And the guidelines for using them safely are determined uh, by the manufacturer and put on the packaging. So we know how to use disinfectant safely. Now, in the United States, what goes on the label and what goes on the packaging and how that disinfectant is allowed to be used is strictly regulated by the US EPA, which is Environmental Protection Agency. They, they uh, consider disinfectants as pesticides. Of course, they're not killing mm -hmm. ants and, and, and flies, but still bacteria are considered pesticides and any disinfectant is considered a pesticide by the EPA and they strictly regulate how that has to be used. In fact, it's against federal regulation to use an EPA registered disinfectant in a manner that's not, a, not a consistent with what is on the label. So what you're telling me right away is a problem. If someone's coming in using non-EPA registered disinfectants to disinfect, uh, they're in violation of federal regulations. Mm -hmm. And I would mm -hmm. automatically tell you, I would not allow that service to occur in my salon. Now, if there were someone out there who were using EPA registered solutions, which are approved for use as a disinfectant and are approved for use in uh, situations such as uh, a salon, well, that would be a different matter. And then you would have a choice as to whether you wanted to use this approved method. Uh, I can mm -hmm. talk about that later, but I would say you wouldn't want to use anything that was disapproved. Uh, you wouldn't want to just get your own disinfectant and put it into a fogger and spray your salon, for instance. That's an right. unapproved use of a disinfectant. And if these companies are not able to show you that they're following EPA regulations and guidelines, uh, then again, I would not utilize their services at all. Red flag I had with this issue, uh, when I saw that it was being done, like people that I know had it done in our salons, the technicians were not wearing any gear of any kinds. They weren't even wearing so much as the three ply mask, let alone a respirator. So then they're setting this thing up and then spraying it and standing in the room, no gloves, nothing. So I thought, wow. Okay. And then they're boasting a 90 day 
guarantee with it. Well, if you're having to wipe down your station and clean and disinfect everything after every client, how is this helping? Are you not well, removing no, it at that point? Yeah, there's no way they can give you a 90 day guarantee. It sounds like, uh, you know, there are a lot of scammers out there. Uh, yeah. And this is sounding more and more like a like a fraudulent scam. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I, I would uh, say anyone approaches you with anything similar to this, yeah. um, I'd ask them for their license. You have to be licensed to do things of this nature. Uh, yeah. And if they can't produce a license, and then I check, check with maybe the business um, business office, look on their Facebook page, yeah. get some references for getting anybody spray anything in your salon. And then when they do, uh, even if you approve of this for some reason. Uh, I would leave the salon for sure and not come back in until uh, the air had been had it had dissipated from the air. Because disinfectants right. are not designed for inhalation. Yeah. I don't know of a single <laughs> disinfectant that's safe to inhale. Well, and I think um, you know, as a nail tech, as long as I have been in it and going through all the multitude of products and different trends and methods, techniques, I learned early on that I needed to protect myself. You know, I needed to protect my health, my lungs, my airspace, my cleanliness, all of the things that, you know, we all should be doing. But I, it's amazing to me that how many don't know these things and especially young techs. That's why I especially like teaching and mentoring students because you learn a little bit in school, but it's never enough. Well, school is where you get your start, but a lot Basics, of people don't yeah. realize that. Uh, you really learn how to be a great nail professional in the field, not in school. Yeah. Uh, and some people never learn that because they don't want to be great nail professionals. They want to be great nail artists. Uh, yeah. Nothing wrong with nail art. I love nail art. But if nail art is the only focus, then you're not a real nail technician. Right. Nail technicians know more than nail art. They understand how to work safely and they understand how to work properly. They understand how to protect their clients' nails and their clients' health and skin as well as their own. Now, this is a full spectrum industry. You can't just be a, a, a great decorator of a cake. You got to be a baker too. If you can't make the cake and decorate it too, you're not really a good baker. I think the same is true with a nail technician. If you only can decorate and you can't really understand what you're doing and you don't have a deeper understanding of how your products work, you're missing out on your education. And it's not difficult. It's not hard stuff to learn. In fact, I think you'd find out it's really fun and easy if you try. And it's really interesting. There's great information out there. There's some really credible educators teaching it. Uh, so I would encourage anyone out there especially when it comes to cleaning and disinfection understand what the best practices are and follow them it's not just good for you and you for your clients it's great for our industry in general especially now and if they're having an allergic reaction even their doctor can't fix it because once you become allergic to an ingredient in a product you're likely going to be allergic to that ingredient for the rest of your life mm -hmm. so if that ingredient is found in other products guess what you're allergic to those other products as well. <clears throat> Worse, if you become allergic to one kind of ingredient used in the industry, then it can make you super sensitive so that you become triggered by other kinds of unrelated ingredients to where the day comes to where you can no longer work in the nail industry and you leave. Now, we never hear about these people because they no longer work in the nail industry. Right. Now, if you want to be one of those people, then you don't want to learn about your products because ignorance is what causes this. It's not something anyone ever does to themselves. And when I say ignorance, I don't mean stupidity. People that are smart cannot have the right information and not having the right information can cause them harm. Mm -hmm. So it's about having the right information. And if you have the right information about these things, it's really easy to avoid. That's the saddest thing of all. None of this is unavoidable. It's all easy to avoid if you have the right information. Uh, for instance, first off, I'll tell you one thing. There's a lot of counterfeit products being sold on the internet. So if you're buying stuff yeah. off the internet from someone you don't know, again, you're rolling the dice. Only buy from license from from approved Reputable distributors, distributors directly yeah. from the manufacturers. Don't buy stuff 
you find on the internet being sold by someone who's who's who knows where they got it or if it's even real. Yeah. Uh, also, too, I'm not, I I feel bad saying this sometimes, but I have to say it because there's a lot of no name brands out there that are little small companies that no one's ever heard of. Well, they're not making their own products. Oftentimes, they're buying their products from China, and they're very poor quality products, and they're being mm -hmm. sold to people, and it can lead to harm, especially when the incorrect nail lamp yeah. is used. As Jim mentioned before, that's super important to use the lamp that properly cures your UV yeah. gel. There's one fact that nail professionals don't know that really cause tremendous amounts of problems. And that one fact is this, a UV curing product will harden as soon as it becomes 50% cured. So just because your gel has hardened, it means it's at least 50% cured. It doesn't mean it's 60 or 70, it could be anything. So don't go by, well, it seems to work. Seems to work isn't right. Uh, mm -hmm. It's best to use a system, a, a product that's designed to be used, this gel with this lamp. And it's been scientifically tested to show that these are going to be a safe combination and going to work well for you. Uh, the manufacturer's job is to tell you how to properly cure their products. They can't provide you with a proper lamp and proper directions for how to properly cure their products. Don't use their products. That's my opinion. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, totally or agree. If you can't ever get them to respond if you purchase something and it's just not working. If they're not responding to you, then you shouldn't waste your money anymore. No more. Yeah. No more. Bye. Look for the brand name, look for the companies that spin around, okay, that already have a reputation that established themselves in the nail community, that you know that you can get access to, that has education, okay, that you can actually call. TV always say, when you buy a, a, a product that you actually, if you have any problems, you can actually call them and they can help you out, folks, okay, all right? Very important, okay? That's, we've been saying that same message years, years in and out, and we will continue saying it, okay? Also, that will support a local manufacturer that has been supporting the industry for all these years. A long time. Mm -hmm. For a long time. You know what I mean, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Thank you so much. Great job. Mm -hmm. I love this new format right here. Uh, it went really smooth, and I, I, I believe that um, that future nail professional that will that have that will get the opportunity to come and talk to the chemist will really enjoy getting their questions answered. All right. And so if you do want to be a guest, make sure you use that blue send button that I mentioned to you in the beginning. Let us know. Say, Kevin, I would like to be a guest. Folks, I cannot guarantee that you will be a guest, but I definitely will put you on the list. And we might have a drawing now knowing that Kim is going to spread all this thing out. I'll, we were trying to, I'll like, you know, promoter. try to be fair. Like, Doug, this ladies, is kind of scary. She's like, she's got booked for the whole year. Then how about the East? I can hear the people in Texas going to be mad. Maine is going to be mad, Floyd. You get it, Doug? You start <laughs> trying to start some war. I got to handle as a producer. Folks, on that note, I just want to say thank you again to the panel. Uh, what a great job they did. On that note, folks, uh, listen, have a, have a wonderful evening. Be safe, okay? Really, be safe out there. And we look forward to seeing you in two weeks for different more topics. On that note, peace out.